Bonjour, bienvenue à l'église unie Mont-Royal et à cette heure de culte, c'est le 96e anniversaire de l'église unie de Montréal. Good morning, welcome to worship on this hot summery day. It's good to have you all here. This does mark the 96th anniversary of the United Church of Canada, and we celebrate that moment when our forebearers in the Methodist, Congregationalist, and most of the Presbyterian churches chose to bear with one another, to work together, worship with one another, support one another in their shared mission in Jesus Christ. Union took place on the 10th of June, 1925. And on this June 10th, the National United Church will celebrate its anniversary together in a service held on YouTube you're welcome to join if you would like. The link is in our newsletter. This is also Pride Sunday in the United Church and the first Sunday in Pride Month. Today, we lift up the lives and ministry of LGBTQIA plus and two-spirit people in all their diversity and give thanks for all that they have added to the life of the United Church from its very beginning recognizing the church's history in denying a place to LGBTQ people. This morning's worship service includes a video declaring the sanctity of life and the dignity of all. Of course, this week, many of us have been shaken by the discovery in Kamloops of an old graveyard containing the bodies of 215 children, old wounds that have never healed are torn open, and our society's history of failing our First Nations and their children has horrified us. The Indigenous Ministries and Justice Working Unit of the United Church has offered us a prayer, which we have included in our newsletter and invitation, which we'll use in worship. This week, the Church does continue its work our worship committee will meet on Monday evening at 7, and on Wednesday, a small group will meet to discuss strengthening our relationship with Kokla. Now, let us move into this time of worship on this 96th anniversary of the United Church. Michelle, would you lead us into worship?
Greetings, brothers and sisters in faith. We come to celebrate God's presence and God's love expressed through Jesus Christ. We come to celebrate God's spirit at work in and among and around us. In the wonder of creation, in the ministry and grace of, of Christ, in the sustaining inspiration of the eternal presence, and in the fellowship and work of your church. In the 96 years, we have been the United Church of Canada. Generations of those who formed our form nomination for this experience in the church from its very beginning, God has been with us, Creator, Christ, and Spirit One. So it is we come and worship this Sunday. O oh God, who to an expectant and united church didst grant at Pentecost the gift of the Holy Spirit, and hast wonderfully brought into one fold those who now worship thee here. Grant us the help of the same Spirit in all our life and worship, that we may expect great things from thee and live radical love for you. And all together, as your people, we would live in the world as disciples of Jesus, sharing with all the love that you share with us in him. We celebrate you, creator. We celebrate you, Jesus, Christ. We celebrate you, Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. From Psalm 145, verses 1 to 9. I will extol you, O God, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall laud your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. The might of your awesome deeds shall be proclaimed, and I will declare your greatness. They shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. I will extol you, God and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will, I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Jessica, will you please sing for us?
Thank you so much, Jessica. Our first reading is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 1 to 7 and 11 to 16. Unity in the body of Christ. I, a prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all hum humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to be the, the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro, blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness in deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way, into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body, joined and knitted together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. Well, good morning, everyone. It's always good to worship. This morning on this anniversary Sunday, we hear the words of St. Paul, who wrote to friends in Ephesus, saying, I beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling, bearing with one another in love. Bear with one another in love. I wonder what that means for us today in the church and in the world. I think it means being with one another, not just our folk, but with others. To bear with one another means you have to spend time with one another, to be together. I like this picture. It's from Lauren Hill High School. People being together, all different kinds of people. And I think bearing with one another means helping one another along the way to offer a hand, to give a lift up. To bear with one another means to travel with one, or one another and in the tricky parts to offer assistance. People working together. I love this picture of, of people in the Congo working on a well project, women working to ensure that their families are fed together, not on their own, but together in cooperation. They're bearing together and bearing the weight of the work as well. Bearing with one another means being with one another in tough times, offering support and care words of encouragement and a listening ear, bearing with one another in times of heartache and sorrow. Bearing with one another, bearing can mean actually carrying, being willing to carry one another and support one another along the way, especially when one or another is injured or weak or just feeling low and unable to go on, we encourage one another and we care for one another. Bearing with one another 
invites us to be present in times of joy and in times of sorrow. To be the church and to bear with one another means making space for celebration and times for grief. Being a place and a people where troubles and sorrows can be shared. And bearing with one another in love, as every parent knows, means being patient when we are not at our best. And sometimes, whether we are young or old, we're not at our very best. St. Paul tells us to bear with one another even then, to encourage and maybe even correct and to soothe, but also to challenge that we might go forward in better ways. Bearing with one another does not mean being a bear. And sometimes in the church, we find bears like this one. People who want to be pushy or loud or snarl at others. I guess that's part of human life too, certainly part of human community. But we're called not to be bears with one another, but to bear one another with love and care and compassion. We're called to bear with one another by joining our hands and our hearts and our talents with one another. To speak God's words and to share God's talents that God has placed in each of us. For each of us have our own gifts as Paul pointed out. But the amazing thing in the church, when we bear with one another and share our gifts, new gifts emerge. Gifts that are created when we're working together that we would never have on our own. On this 96th anniversary of the United Church, I invite you to continue bearing with one another in love, sharing your gifts, joining heart and hand, putting mind and faith to the task of living out God's love with one another and our neighbors in the world. Would you pray with me? God who created us and named us and called us to be family and friends to one another, Help us to walk with each other, to journey the road of life together, to help one another, to care for one another, as you have taught us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have this ministry, and we are not discouraged. It is by God's own power that we may live and serve. Openly we share God's word, speaking truth as we believe, praying that the shadowed world may healing light receive. We have this ministry, Oh, God, receive our living. Oh, Christ, the tree of life, our end and our beginning. We grow to fullest flower when rooted in your love. Brothers, sisters, clergy lay Call to service by your grace. Different cultures, different gifts, the young and old the place. We have this ministry. Oh God, receive our giving. The yoke of Christ is ours. The whole world is our parish. We daily take the cross, the burden and the joy. 
bearing hurts of those we serve, wounded, bruised, and bold with pain. Holy Spirit, bread and wine, we die and rise again. We have this ministry. Oh God, receive our love. Let us pray. Prions. Dieu éternel, aide-nous à refléter ta bonté, ta grâce, ta générosité. Quand nous ne nous prenons pas soin les uns des autres, renouvelle en nous ton amour et ta compassion. Lorsque nous dissimulons nos dons et nos ressources, aide-nous à ouvrir nos mains et nos cœurs, assurés de l'abondance de ta bénédiction. Quand nous nous cachons, amadou-nous dans ton monde et aide-nous à réaliser ta vision de la vie. Nous le demandons au nom de Jésus qui nous a appris à prier. Notre Père qui es aux cieux, que ton nom soit sanctifié, que ton règne vienne, que ta volonté soit faite sur la terre comme au ciel. Donne-nous aujourd'hui notre pain de ce jour. Pardonne-nous nos offenses comme nous pardonnons aussi à ceux qui nous ont offensés. Et ne nous soumets pas à la tentation, mais délivre-nous du mal, car c'est à toi que pertiennent le règne, la puissance et la gloire, au siècle des siècles. Amen. Friends, on this anniversary, Sunday of the United Church, we celebrate a united and united church a church that welcomes all people. But we know that despite all the signs at the doors of our churches that say, all welcome, not all people have been equally welcomed, nor have we always borne one another in love. We know this from the experience of our neighbors at Union United Church, whose picture is on our newsletter this week, and by the experience of many of our First Nations congregations, and also so many of the LGBTQ plus two spirit community who have been asked to live secreted lives within our congregations, or who have been told that they are not worthy of our fellowship in the past. Though we are now an affirming congregation of the United Church of Canada and have publicly intentionally and explicitly stated the inclusion of all people, whatever their ability or age, ethnicity, gender, language, race, sexuality, or status as worthy participants in Christ's ministry, it's easy for our voice to grow quiet, to believe that we are somehow alone in this perspective especially in the vastness of the church. I know some of you have felt this way. This is especially so as others raise their voices against inclusion of the LGBTQ community. You may know that in the past months, some of our sister denominations have set limits on the participation of members of the LGBTQ community within their denomination, and in one ca case have asked congregations to vote not only to exclude LGBTQ persons from their membership, but also all those who believe in the right for all people to be members and exercise ministry. Some make the persistent demand that members of the LGBTQ community undergo interventions aimed at changing their very nature. On this Pride Sunday, I invite you to hear a, de a declaration for the sanctity of life and the dignity of all 
spoken by members of the Global Interfaith Commission on LGBTQ plus lives. Though produced in Great Britain, it is endorsed by members of the church and religious organizations around the world, including the Anglican and United Churches, Jewish, Muslim, Buddhist, and Hindu leaders. This statement bears witness to a faith position that we share. We come together as senior religious leaders, academics and lay leaders from around the world to affirm the sanctity of life and the dignity of all. We affirm that all human beings of all sexual orientations, gender expressions and gender identities are a precious part of creation and are part of the natural order. We affirm that we are all equal under God, whom many call the divine, and that we are all therefore equal to one another. We call for all to be treated equally under the law. We recognize with sadness that certain religious teachings have often, throughout the ages, caused and continue to cause deep pain and offense to those who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and intersex. We acknowledge with profound regret that some of our teachings have created and continue to create oppressive systems that fuel intolerance, perpetuate injustice, and result in violence. This has led and continues to lead to the rejection and alienation of many by their families, their religious groups, and their cultural communities. We ask for forgiveness from those whose lives have been damaged and destroyed on the pretext of religious teaching. We believe that love and compassion should be the basis of faith and that hatred can have no place in religion. We call on all nations to put an end to criminalization on the grounds of sexual orientation or gender identity for violence against LGBT individuals to be condemned and for justice to be done on their behalf. We call for all attempts to change, suppress or erase a person's sexual orientation, gender identity or gender expression, commonly known as conversion therapy, to end and for these harmful practices to be banned. Finally, we call for an end to the perpetuation of prejudice and stigma and commit to work together to celebrate inclusivity and the extraordinary gift of our diversity. May God give us strength and courage to be faithful and strong as we bear with one another in love. Our gospel lesson this morning is taken from Mark chapter 3, verses 13 to 22. Jesus appoints the twelve. He went up to the mountain and called to him those whom he wanted, and they came to him. And he appointed twelve, whom he also named apostles to be with him, and to be sent out to proclaim the message, and to have authority to cast out demons. So he appointed the twelve. Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James, son of Zebedee, and John, the brother of James, to whom he called the sons of thunder, and Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew, and Matthew and Thomas, and James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, and Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Then he went home. And the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him, for people were saying, He has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, He has Beelzebub, 
and by the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons. Ah, uh, the evolution of a name. Do you remember being called by your name when you were little? When you were small and your mother sat next to you on the side of your bed in the morning and called you by name, perhaps stroking your cheek or touching your nose to wake you up to a wonderful, new, exciting day. Or when you came into the room and someone spoke your name with excitement. When your father or mother came home from work and you shouted for them and they called you by your name and embraced you. Most of us have wonderful memories of being called by our name in love. And you remember being called by your friends, a telephone call coming to your house, inviting you to talk and share secrets over the phone or make plans or shouting to one another across a playground, an invitation to meet up, to share important moments of childhood, to play and laugh together. Yesterday evening, I saw three little girls, not so little, maybe 10. They were on the corner of Plamondon and Victoria, and they were all dressed up in their Sabbath vests. Two girls stood on one corner and shouted across the street to another, calling her by name, beckoning her to come. And she ran across the street and the three threw their arms around each other, chattering as they went on their way. The three girls clearly knew each other well and each the fullness of their lives. Do you remember the games where two captains had to choose their team, calling Jimmy, Sarah, Stephen, Jennifer, Sam, Doug? Oh, you hoped that your name would be called out, that you would be part of the team. Do you remember your first job where, <laughs> if it was like mine, you were basically a skivvy laborer. <clears throat> Your boss would call you and send you to do something like this or that. And just as you got going on that task, they'd call you again and send you in another direction to another grunt job. And you worried all day that your boss would remember all of the little things they had told you to do and not call you out on something you'd forgotten. Oh, our names are full of meaning and memories. They call us into relationship with those whom we love. They call us to joy. They call us to task. They call us to account. We hope they are used and hope that they are not abused. We like to emphasize the call of Jesus to his disciples. Jesus went up the mountain and called those whom he wanted, and they came, Simon, Peter, James and John, Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, and the other Simon. They came and they followed Jesus. We celebrate their discipleship. In this story, they become the nearest and dearest to Jesus. Participants in Jesus' life and work and ministry. It's a heartwarming story that speaks of inclusion and love. Not just the inclusion and love of Jesus, but the inclusion and love of God. These disciples are drawn to Jesus as he welcomes each and every one of them, draws them close, and makes a place for them as he welcomes sinners and saints. They listen to Jesus' words, 
witnessing his acts of kindness, of care and compassion. We love the story of Jesus' call to his disciples, but we sometimes miss the part that Jesus not only welcomed the disciples in, but Jesus sent those same disciples out. We are told that Jesus appointed 12, whom he named apostles, to be with him, but also to be sent out to proclaim a message, to have authority to cast out demons. An apostle is one who is sent out, an emissary, an ambassador, a worker, an agent. The apostles were not only called to be with Jesus, but also to go out on Jesus' behalf. The apostles went out to extend Jesus' ministry into the world to tell people that God was there with them, that God's kingdom was close at hand, that there was healing and reconciliation that there were blessings for all. The apostles went out to preach and teach and heal and offer the same gifts that Jesus had offered to them. We in the churches have often missed the dynamism of discipleship. We've often emphasized disciples as being with Jesus that Jesus comes and calls us by name and that we get to have fellowship with Jesus. And the church often likes to sing about that. What a friend we have in Jesus and Jesus shepherd of my soul. And we call the church a sanctuary where we can come and find comfort and care. And all that is true. We, we are loved and cherished by God and it is made known in the relationship we have with Jesus and the Spirit. But being called by name doesn't mean our Christian life stops once we get inside the church. Or that the role of the church is just to be here as a refuge. We are called to be both disciples of Jesus and also apostles of Jesus called and sent out into the world. 96 years ago this week, at a gathering at the Mutual Street Arena in Toronto, representatives of the Methodist Church of Canada, the Congregational Churches in Canada, and about three quarters of the Presbyterian churches dared to form a new union, an attempt to be the church in Canada and the world in a new way. It was daring, for each denomination had a cherished history, traditions, and ways of doing things. They wanted to hold on to them. In fact, many churches of each denomination were doing just fine, very well, actually, by today's standards. But something was missing for them. Well-established congregational ministries and missions were at work. And they wanted to continue, but they also wanted to expand, to work more effectively in the wide expanses of Canada and in the world. They saw it as an opportunity to be a national church from sea to sea to sea, to work more effectively and more faithfully in the world. They wanted to help this relatively new nation of Canada to grow into the promise God had offered it. Historian Phyllis Earhart says that the United Church's founders were attempting to build a church that would faithfully serve and support Canada's growth to national maturity. From our beginning, there was not only a cherishing of our comfortable congregational life, 
but a push to go out into the world to share God's good news and to live out Christ's ongoing care and compassion in the world. The United Church felt that it was sent by God into the world to share the fullness of Christ's ministry with others. At this point, of course, we have to recognize that we have not always done that with perfection. Our congregational lives were at once rich and nurturing, places where faith can be celebrated, God's love lived out, and the call for justice and right relationships find a toehold. But they've also at times been marred with division, unnecessary controversy, and even laziness. When we have gone out into the world, <clears throat> we have not always really followed the gospel, but sometimes other priorities. When we've gone out into the world, we've sometimes failed to live out justice and peace. The United Church's role in the Indian Residential School legacy, for which we have and must continue to apologize, bears testament to that. So does our treatment of persons who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgendered, and a host of other people over whom the church felt fit to be judgmental. And yet the church and its members have felt blessed to be called, to have heard our name, and to know that we have been welcomed by Christ with all Christ's grace and mercy and forgiveness and ability to transform us. To know that we are invited to take part in Christ's reconciling and renewing work of love. No wonder the saying of St. Francis of Assisi has so resonated in our church. Go out into the world and preach the gospel Use words when necessary. We have come to understand that the gospel is not only preached with words. The gospel is preached with presence, being present with others and allowing them to be present with us. The gospel is preached by offering a place to others and allowing them to be present with us. The gospel is preached when we, pardon me, the gospel is preached by offering a place to others, especially those who often not been present, those who have been excluded. The gospel is preached when we share food with the hungry and healing with the sick and peace to those who have lived in danger preached when we take up the dance of life and dance round with each other into the world. Of course, we must be able to articulate the gospel that God who created and rejoiced in the wonder of creation and even in us has suffered with us as we have marred creation and hurt one another, but that God did not give up on us but sent his beloved into the world to speak again a life-giving word of forgiveness and encouragement and share a healing touch that heals and restores and that the spirit shared between the creator and the Christ is still at work, showing us a way forward to the fullness of life for all people. But God does not choose to do that alone to make us bystanders, observers of God's action, as wonderful as that is. We are to remember that we are called to be disciples of Jesus, apostles of his ministry, nurtured by God's love made known in Jesus and sent out into the world to share the same. So what is a 96-year-old denomination and congregation supposed to do. Our sanctuary should continue as a place of fellowship and discipleship, 
a place where God's word and Jesus' good news is shared and practiced. It should be a place known in our community of grace and hospitality. But it should also carry that message out into the world, onto the streets of Mount Royal and Montreal and around the globe. We should and must give every gift we are given. We should hung, uh, feed the hungry and clothe the naked and house the homeless both in our building and dans la rue. Yes, we have the Unifre food program, and we support food banks. We have Minipri for clothing and household items, and we support the missions across the city. But we can find new ways of not only working in the world, but being present to all people in the world. We should be reaching out to others, going beyond our statements of being inclusive and including others, and asking to be included in the lives of others. As an affirming church, we need to be public, intentional, and explicit in our welcome. But perhaps we also need to find more overt ways of celebrating pride in our community. This is today's uh, celebration scene at Beaconsfield United Church, where the Reverend Sean Friday and Raphael Perus are leading a pride celebration with joy and enthusiasm. As an affirming congregation, we need to find a specific ministry for those in our midst who have felt and can, felt uh, excluded and continue to hear a loud message from quarters of the church that they are somehow unworthy of God's love and should be excluded from the rights and ministry of the church. For we know that that same grace is extended to them that is extended to us. As a church, that has some, shown some interest in reconciliation, we need to find ways of reaching out to First Nations neighbors and accompanying them, especially in this time of grief. As a church that has so often been preoccupied with appearances, we need to go to places where folks have struggles that seem unfamiliar to us, at least historically. As members of a church, as a church who has members that, with connections around the world, we need to find ways of reaching out to those beyond our borders, from the Congo to Cameroon to Cambodia to Indonesia, Korea, and perhaps even to sisters and brothers in struggling congregations just across the river from Montreal. We need to welcome the stranger which we have done in the past and which we can do in the future. We need to be able to speak to one another, the names of those around us, reminding each of us that we are all loved and cherished. Well, when we reach out and speak those names and engage that congregation, uh, those conversations, there are some who will call us crazy as they did to Jesus, and others who will want to stop us, telling us that inclusion, affirmation, hospitality, and service are either naive or unhelpful in the world. And yet we know the difference those very gifts of grace and welcome have meant to us when we heard our names called so let us speak the names of those around us and remind each other that we are loved and cherished, that there is a place and a purpose for us in this church and in the church of Christ. God has so gifted us to do this with skills and talents, hearts and minds that are big and open. So let us love and serve 
and heal and reconcile as the Spirit makes us able, for we are so gifted to do. Thanks be to God for this fellowship, this church, and particularly the good news of Jesus, which welcomes and transforms us all. Amen. May God give us the courage and the calling for this ministry. Amen. Justice and peace in harmony. Deep in our hearts, there is a common longing. Deep in our hearts, there is a common theme. Deep in our hearts. There is a common current flowing to freedom like a stream. Deep in our hearts, there is a common vision. Deep in our hearts, there is a common song deep in our hearts and there is a common story telling creation that we are one that we are that we are we are not alone we live in god's world we believe in god who has created it is creating who has come in jesus the word made flesh to reconcile and make new who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. And so we say together. Thanks, 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 thanks to, God. to God. Praise, 
Friends, I invite you now to support the work of your church. In this, it's local expression through Mount Roy United Church in the work of the United Church of Canada and through partner churches around the world. So even on this, our 96th anniversary, let us not grow weary in doing what is right for we will reap at harvest time. If we do not give up, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for all those of the family of faith. I now invite you to join me in the prayers of creation. And this will be a slightly different prayer. It will be both a repeat after me prayer and a do as I do prayer. So I'm going to be using my hands and I'm going to invite you to do the same motion as I do. And as well, there's going to be a few moments of silence during this time. And I invite you during the moments of silence to either say a word out loud for yourself or for those around you that they might hear, or just to allow the silence to hold you. Please pray with me. God within. God within. God without. God without. God of all creation. God of all creation. We offer you our prayers. We offer you our prayers. For ourselves and for all creation. For all ourselves and for all uh, creation. For the creatures of the sea. For the creatures of the sea. And for the birds of the air. For the birds of the air. For all the lives on the land. For all the, uh, that lives on the land. Or that lies within it. Or. Or. Uh, or, or, in that, it. or in it. Or in it. We give you thanks. We give you thanks. We recognize that creation is hurting. We recognize that your creation is hurting. And that we have been the cause of that pain. And that we have been the cause of that pain. Forgive us, we pray. Forgive us, we pray. Help us, we pray. Help us, we pray. To be transformers, healers, people who change the world. To be transformers, healers, people who change the world. For the health and well being of all your creatures. For the health and well being of all your creatures. From the smallest. Uh, from the smallest to the largest the largest help us to understand that we are one part of your creation help us to understand that we are one part of your creation and that your love fills the spaces connecting all of us and that your love fills the spaces connecting us all. help us to live together new help us to live together new as followers of jesus as followers of jesus as people led by the holy spirit as people led by the holy spirit as people loved by the creator. People loved by the creator. We pray. We pray. Amen. Amen. God, creator of the earth and universe, who created each one of us, gave us a name and knows us all together. May we lift up all that is good and beautiful and wondrous in life and in our life together. We give you thanks for the love and care shared with one another, for the privilege of walking together, accompanying one another 
in the highs and lows of life, of working together to bring opportunities for health and wholeness, reconciliation and renewal for one another and for our world. May we in all things remember your compassion for each of us and share the good news of your grace in the world by word and action. We pray this day for all who are ill, those suffering still from COVID-19 here and around the world, and for those suffering every disease of body, mind, and spirit. We pray for those who care for those patients and for those who grieve at the death of loved ones. We pray for those who this day live with violence, whether in places of armed conflict like Afghanistan and Burkina Faso, or on the streets of North American cities, or in homes behind closed doors. We pray for those who on our city streets, sleeping under overpasses, lining up for food and water and washrooms at missions, for all who remain nameless to us, but equally in need of your love and care. In that same spirit of prayer, remembering the lost children of Kamloops, we pray for our neighbors in First Nations communities who struggle this week in heart, mind, and body as we give voice to the words offered by Murray Pruden, a prayer for the loss in Kamloops. Creator, we give thanks for this day and each day you grant us life to walk on this great land, our mother. Give us the heart and strength to come together in prayer in time of mourning, reflection and peace. The news we've heard these last few days of our relations, our families, the children who have been physically taken away from us and who have now been found. And with this news, we grieve for their memory, for their struggle, for their spirit. We pray for good understanding, guidance, and love for all our families and communities who we will need direction and resolution at this time. And we come together in prayer and ask that you be a light to guide us, to be part of that needed peace, support and resolve for everyone who is reacting to this great tragedy in our indigenous nations, this great land. Creator, be with us. Allow us to be brave. Allow us to be strong. Allow us to be gentle with one another. Allow us to be humble. But most of all, allow us to be like the Creator's love. Peace be with us. We lift up our prayers to you in love, trust, and truth. Peace be with us all. In Jesus' name. And so we pray the words that Jesus taught, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. No hands but yours to heal the wounded world. No hands but yours to soothe all its suffering. No touch but yours to bind the broken hope of the people of God. Christ has no body now but yours. 
no hands but yours here on this earth yours is the work to serve with the joy of compassion no eyes but yours to see as christ would see to find the lost to gaze with compassion no eyes but yours to glimpse the holy joy of the city of god christ has no body now but yours no hands but yours here on this earth yours is the work to serve with the joy of compassion no feet but yours to journey with the poor to walk this world with mercy and justice yours are the steps to build a lasting peace for the children of god christ has no body now but yours no hands but yours here on this earth yours is the work to serve with the joy of compassion through every gift give back to those in need as christ has blessed so now be his blessing with every gift a benediction be to the people of god people of god yeah friends as we go out into the world whatever you do in word or deed do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through him. Go be a blessing in our world. And the blessing of God, our creator, who made all things good, and the blessing of Christ, a redeemer, who saves and restored all that is good. The blessing of the Spirit, our comforter, our challenger, our guide. May this blessing give faith, hope, courage, and perseverance. Amen.
hope we are the voice of peace go make a difference in the Let us go forth together to love and serve the Lord. Happy Sunday, everyone.